Once again, I welcome you back. So in this lecture, we are going to talk about the origin of Indian Christians and the Apostle Thomas. One of the oldest and strongest tradition in church history is that Thomas the Apostle carried the gospel to India not long after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ. It traces as far back as about the year 200 when a Christian in Edisha on the great bank of the Euphrates River between Roman Asia and Persia wrote a lively account of how the apostle had been sent out from Jerusalem to India for preaching the gospel and indeed he preached fearlessly before kings and founded the Indian church. Early Christians called this as the Acts of Thomas and this became the most popular of a number of similar apocryphal acts that appeared in the 3rd century. Its importance in, in Asian church history is that it survived as the oldest narrative account of a church in Asia beyond the borders of Roman Empire. It, it makes strange reading today with its incredible miracles and exaggeration. But the vivid picture it paints about the Thomas as the apostle to Asia is fitting introduction to the history of the church in Asia. So let's talk about the Acts of Thomas. The story opens impressively with the 11 apostles gathered in Jerusalem to plan a strategy of obedience to the command of Jesus. In the book of Acts of Thomas, chapter 1 verse 1, it is written, At that time we disciples were all in Jerusalem, and we divided the reasons of the world that each one of us might go to the region which fell to his Lord. India fell to Judas Thomas, who is also Didymus, but he did not wish to go, saying that through the weakness of the flesh he could not travel. And how can I, who is a Hebrew, go and preach the truth among the Indians? And the Savior appeared to him by night and said, Fear not, Thomas, go to India and preach the word there for my grace is with thee. But he would not obey and said, Send me where thou wilt, but, but somewhere else, for I am not going to the Indians. When disciples were facing this problem, they prayed for help and Jesus appeared in a vision. That happened to be in Jerusalem at that time, according to the history, an agent of the Indian king Gondafur, looking for a carpenter to build a palace for the king. And an ignatiously contrived solution to the problem of how to get a reluctant Thomas to India, then Jesus appeared to the agent and offered to sell Thomas to him as the carpenter he names. And when the sale was completed, the Savior took Judas, is also Thomas, and led him to the merchant Aban. And Aban said to him, Is this thy master? And the apostle said, Yes. But Aban said, I have, I have bought thee from him. And the apostle was silent. On the following morning, the apostle prayed, Let thy will be turned, master. So they began their voyage. Their first stop was on the journey was Antipolis. Its location is uncertain and not important if the acts of Thomas is just Syrian pilgrims' progress and allegory. But many now take it more seriously as unimaginative but conscientious effort to reconstruct half forgotten events that actually occurred. If it is so, then it might 
be referred to a, provi a provincial capital on the Nil route to India. Nomos and Rapolites are less likely to be Andhra territory on the Indian coast. There are different aspects of Apostles' ministry in Andropolis. One of the accounts states that in the earliest outreach of the Christian missions, the Jewish communities of the Second Diaspora were often the starting point for missionary evangelism in Asia. Thomas first convert is a little Jewish flute girl at the king's court. Another aspect of the Apostles' mission in Andropolis was reported in the Actum raises a caution. Thomas was invited to the wedding of the king's daughter and was rudely slept by a cupbearer. He turns on the man and tells him sharply that God may forgive him in the world to come, but in this world I shall see the hand that smote me dragged by dogs. This is no sooner said than the man is torn to pieces by a lion and black dog picks up his right hand in its mouth and carries it into the banquet hall, banquet hall in triumphant vindication of the apostle prophecy. It is mentioned in the Acts, chapter, in the Acts of Thomas chapter 1 verse 6, 8 and 9. Thomas left Andropolis, having angered the king by converting his daughter at her own wedding. At last he reached India and the realm of the king Gondapur. Gondapur sent Thomas to the building of a royal palace and gave him a large amount of money for the project. But the apostle looked about at the countless poor around him and could not bring himself to give his life only to the providing of more luxury for rich. When the king heard these things, he sent for Thomas. Have you built my palace? he asked. Yes, said the apostle. Then when shall we go and see it? The king asked, Not now, but when you die, said Thomas. After hearing this king, after hearing this, king, king was very much frustrated and ordered him, ordered him clapped into jail. But that same night, king's brother died. In the abode of the dead, he saw a beautiful palace and asked to live in one of the lower apartments. No, said the angels, this palace is one, one which that Christian is building for your brother. At last Gondapur is convinced that his palace has indeed been erected, not, not however on earth but in heaven. He brings the apostle put of prison and listen gladly to his preaching. This part of the story of the Apostles' mission ends this great success because many others also believed and came into the refuge of the Savior. The final chapter of the Acts of Thomas conclude with the Apostles' journey overland into other parts of India. He appoints a deacon to praise Jesus and take his place in the land of the King Gondapur. Then he travels on to his final mission and death in the region of King Mistyrus, which, which tradition locates in Madras in East India. There again, the apostles, apostles' radical teaching against marriage brought trouble, but some of the chief uh, women of the kingdom, including Queen are converted and shunned the marriage bed. King was very angry and accuses Thomas of bewitching them, orders his execution. He was led to a mount outside the city. The soldier speared him to death 
and there he ended his apostolate as he had begun it long before in Jerusalem with the words of his great confession, My Lord, my God.